Cinda Cedar. Elizabeth Stiles walks down Mayfield Road in Cleveland Heights wearing a green Adidas hat to block the sun. Over her ears, noise-canceling headphones tune out the loud four-lane street. I know, like every social interaction is a test that could result in disaster. <laughs> Does it feel like that sometimes? Not in my field, but... She yeah. lives on a side street 12 houses away from this busy road. She walks four to five miles almost every day as a calming mechanism. Usually she walks with her dog, Finn, but today he's home recovering from total hip replacement surgery. Sometimes I can convince him to walk up here through the old park synagogue, which is a lot quieter. We stop at a local coffee shop on the road, Rising Star Coffee. Put a drink in your cute little patio out there. Last year, she discovered why she is easily overwhelmed by light and sound. Sensory overload is commonly experienced by people on the autism spectrum. When autistic people present in the world as not an autistic person, it's called masking. And so I've been masking to myself too. I didn't really know until a year ago. And so I just used to deal with it and then didn't know why I was spacey or dissociating or needed to rest. It's exhausting, she says, which leads to autistic burnout. Autistic burnout is fatigue of the body and mind. According to the National Autistic Society, burnout comes from years of trying to meet demands not in sync with an autistic person's needs. Stiles, who is 56 years old, began identifying as autistic after a conversation she had with her primary care physician. She opted out of getting formally diagnosed. I mean, there's some support that's available, as I understand it, but I don't think I, I, don't think I need that at this time. Stiles is a political science professor at John Carroll University. She took a self-evaluation test online and began researching the disorder. She says that understanding herself better has helped her understand her father, who passed away two years ago. She believes he had autism, though he was never diagnosed. All the things that I discovered about myself were true about my dad, and it pains me that he, like he would have been really interested in this. I know he would have, and I think he would have learned a lot about himself, and maybe we would have learned about ourselves together. She says her dad spent his life researching World War II, which he lived through. This could be defined as a special interest, which is a term used to describe the intense and hyper-focused interest that people with autism have. I guess autism has become a special interest of sorts in the last... A few years ago, Styles became highly focused on computer coding, which she says is a special interest for her. I started learning about it, and then I was lucky to have somebody from the computer science department work with me on it, and then now I teach every semester this class. She uses the phrase, little professor. It's used to describe people with autism who have advanced knowledge in their special area of interest. Well, (laughs) I'm an actual professor, but definitely a little professor. Researching autism over the past year has brought her profound growth, she says. By listening to what her body needs, quieter spaces and rest, she's experiencing less autistic overload. She especially grew in communicating her ideas to others. It's had an effect on my relationships with people. I've actually had more conflict in the last year, just like verbal conflict, than I can remember <laughs> in any single year, probably in adulthood. And But I think it's because I'm, I'm spacing out less and articulating myself more. She says she's giving people something to react to, which may be something they don't want to hear. She's unmasking more than she used to, which is giving her and her spouse more opportunities for honest dialogue. And she feels more connected to her dad. She has internal representations of him that she now understands better in herself. Kelly Craybill, Ideastream Public Media.